In this memorable installment of University Challenge, Amal Rajan's unexpected response to a dance music-based question disrupted the show's prestigious atmosphere of academic rivalry. What name is given to the genre of dance music that developed in the UK in the early 1990s out of the rave scene and reggae sound system culture associated with acts such as a guy called Gerald and Goldie? Drum and bass. I can't accept drum bass. We need jungle, I'm afraid. The clip was uploaded online by Nathan Filer, a bar spa university lecturer, with a plea for it to be sampled. Within hours, reactions and ready-made jungle flips flooded the internet, creating an immediately iconic moment. We need jungle, I'm afraid. <laughs> But the footage also reignited an age-old question. What exactly makes something jungle? <laughs> jungle music is a culturally rich, hybrid genre with a unique recipe that could only have been cooked up in the kitchen of post-war Britain. Exhilarating, complex and powerful. This innovative fusion was first created by working-class young people, many of whom's parents had come to England looking for a better life, bringing a wealth of new music with them. So you had the Windrush generation from Jamaica, but also at the same time from Mauritius. My mum and dad were given scholarships to come over here to become nurses. Music that was in my house was a Sega, which is a form of soca and reggae. I've still got my mum's record collection. It was from Diana Ross to Elvis to the Beatles. The sonic palette of the original jungle pioneers is varied and all-encompassing. Pop, rock, punk, two-tone, 70s and 80s hip-hop, soul, R&B, rare groove, jazz, reggae, raga, classical and international folk music from Algeria to Guinea-Bissau. Each of these were sources of inspiration during the genre's formative years. Me and my influences are from like people like The Clash and James Brown, and it's all, it's all fucked up, it's all mixed up, you know what I mean? But these are people that I've grown with. By the time the pioneers had reached early adulthood, a new kind of sound was brewing across the Atlantic. In the 1980s, the sounds of the mainly black gay discotheques of Chicago were reaching the English shores via black dancers in the north of England and through clubs in the Balearic Islands. House, with its deep bass lines, catchy riffs, four to the floor beat and prominent vocals were welcomed with arms raised high. The machine-like pulse of Detroit techno, influenced by both New York Electro and Chicago House, also found favour with ravers, keen to dance out the weekend after toiling through the working week. They say there is no hope. They say no UFO. Why is no head pump high? Maybe you'll see them. It was only a matter of time before DJs and producers across Europe caught the bug and started making tracks of their own, blending in their individual influences to create something new, spawning subgenre after subgenre. Acid House. Happy Hardcore, Hardcore, Breakbeat Hardcore, Jungle Techno, and finally, Jungle. When many Jamaicans came to England in the late 1950s, they brought the culture of the reggae sound system with them. Helping them to maintain a connection with their roots and build a sense of togetherness in a country whose prejudice often meant it didn't want to share its community spaces. But reggae is to teach you something. Reggae is like an education. When, when you listen, you sit down and listen, them show you all about prophecy, them show you about great black people was beforehand, them show you all things that happened to black man. Sound systems like Jar Shaka and Channel One would set up their own parties with turntables, huge speakers and valve technology that created a powerful, immersive sound environment. Now this is the last one before we go away, seeing a last rhythm we are shackled up and we're gone. Jungle adopted two core elements of Jamaican sound system culture, the MC and dub plates. The MC was the master of ceremonies, the ever-present host that would talk directly to and interact with the crowd, maintaining a specific vibe on the dance floor. Rush up on this one and done. Sin. 
Dub plates were the tools of those selecting the music. Bespoke, limited edition, acetate pressings of tracks. Illegal vinyl. Specifically designed to elicit strong reactions from the crowd. The DIY ethos of sound system culture was also channeled by the jungle community. By building their own infrastructure, from record stores and pirate radio stations, to dub cutting houses and printers, they could flourish at their own pace, outside the constraints and boundaries of the mainstream music industry. All these guys are doing it independently, yeah? They seem to have very sort of obvious and simple ways of selling their tunes, i.e. they promote via the DJs, radio stations and clubs. Now that we've established the foundational elements of jungle, we can look at its unique chemistry. And as a wise man once said, it's all in the programming. A key feature of jungle is its deep, body rupturing bass lines. What's in there right now is just a, just a kick, just a... See, that's just a, that's just a bass, flat kick. These low frequency oscillations, inherited from dub, reggae, and sound system culture, play a critical role in driving the pulse of the sound. There's different ways you can do it. That's, how, that's the way I'm doing it today. Rapid fire drum patterns are also a signature element. These are usually sourced from breakbeats, sped up, and layered drum solos, sampled from old funk, soul, and reggae tracks. Three of the most popular breakbeats are the Amen, Think, and Apache. The drum patterns in Jungle are usually intricate and syncopated. Snare drums, hi-hats, and cymbals are prominent, creating high percussive energy that perfectly complements the bass line. Many jungle tracks feature vocal and melodic samples. These chopped, rearranged, and looped samples came from a multitude of different genres, and choices were often inspired by the cultural music foundation of the producers. of post-rave early jungle, basically you would be showing off your skill as a producer with what you could disguise, you know, so you would take like the, the most known sample or whatever and then you would like totally cloak it or, you know, you would find a, a new way of using a sampler to cut it up. And it's not just limited to music. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Jungle features all manner of samples, Sirens, gunshots, warp time stretches, and sound bites from TV shows and films. Often creating a sense of intensity, chaos, melancholy, or terror. Valley of the Shadows by Origin Unknown uses two samples extensively throughout the track. The next thing I felt that I was in this long dark tunnel. Countdown from the ground computers, T minus 31 seconds. 31 seconds. On Remark and Louis Cypher's Ricky, the pair sampled John Singleton's seminal coming of age drama, Boys in the Hood, deploying vocals from one of the film's most harrowing moments. Ricky! Goldie's Terminator features an early example of time stretching. There was a lot of equipment in the studio and I'd seen a HF harmonizer. The daddy. If you want to play a guitar at one pitch, you can play it, but then if you want to, you want to sound like it's 10 guitars, you can have guitars playing pitch down and guitars playing up, but they're playing at the same time. Hmm. So 
If I put breakbeat through that. You're talking about things that I haven't done yet. Time stretches, exemplified to their full effect on Goldie's debut album, Timeless, gave Jungle a futuristic 21st century sound, which also became one of its signatures. Between 1994 and 1997, reggae music labels like Greensleeves and Jetstar, alongside other major labels, wanted to capitalise on the popularity of Jungle. They flooded the market with reggae sample Jungle tracks, an offshoot known as Ragga Jungle. Who them send for the one Papa Lava? The chart success of Incredible by MB featuring General Levy, an original nutter by Shy FX and UK Apache, led the mainstream media to incorrectly document that reggae samples were the leading characteristic of Jungle. When in fact, Jungle can feature samples from any of its musical foundations. Although Jungle had its mainstream moment in the 90s, artists inspired by its sound have sustained its presence in clubs, charts and on social media ever since, right alongside those who have been shaping its culture from its inception. Jungle is so strong. Do you know what I mean? It is so strong. No matter what genre of drum and bass comes out, it always gets dominated by jungle. Even the people coming up now, they've learned the basic respect values of the jungle scene, and people live by that. I think it's important to touch base with like the foundations, with the legends, with the with the creators, but like to pay homage, respect. It's being passed down because it's people like me. Jungle is such a magical mix of different genres and influences, which is exactly what made its sound so fresh and exciting when it first emerged. And it's arguably what keeps it sounding full of energy to the present day.